everyone, welcome back. My name is Morgan. This is my channel, Pisces Paperbacks. And today I am going to be talking about the 10 lowest rated books on my Goodreads Red Shelf. So like, I'm gonna go to the books that I read on Goodreads, sort them by average rating, lowest to highest, and talk about like the, the bottom 10 books and to see if I agree or disagree. I actually just recorded the top 10, like the highest rated books, but the problem with that one is I got to the end and was like, this was super boring because I like, I basically like all of the books in my top 10. So it's like, I didn't like have any fun, spicy opinions that I wanted to share. And then I was like, oh, let me go look at the lowest rated ones. And literally the first one, I'm mad. <laughs> like I'm angry. So I really want to do this and we're going to do this right now. I hope you understand like what I'm talking about because um, I just think this is a really fun idea. I got this idea from watching Mara at Books Like Whoa do this video a couple weeks ago, but she got the idea from somebody else whose name I'm going to put on the screen right now. And I will link both of their channels in the description box. So let's get started. The, th this makes me really angry. So I actually thought about doing this video a couple weeks ago and looked at the lowest rated books um, and they were different. So the lowest rated book that, that I have right now is The Girl of Hawthorne and Glass by Adonjarit Poole with an average rating of 2.62. 2.62? Are you fucking kidding me? Before, when I checked last time, it was the second lowest rated book, with the lowest rated book being Adam by Ariel Schrag um, with a 2.69. So The Girl of Hawthorne and Glass dropped by 0.07 or 8. 0.08 stars, which is a fairly significant drop to happen in two weeks. Are you fucking kidding me? Okay, let's get started. The lowest rated book on my Goodreads is The Girl of Hawthorne and Glass by Don Jarek Poole. That's bullshit. This book is so fucking good. It's about, I forget her name, but it's about a girl named Eli and she was created by witches um, to be an assassin on earth. So when ghosts, which are like these corrupting forces on earth, kind of start making trouble, the witch, her witch mother sends her to earth to like kill the ghost and then come back. And when like she gets sent to earth and something goes wrong, she falls in with these group of, this group of humans who are actually trying to capture like the heart of the coven, which is the ruling witch body in the sky city. All of this sounds very ridiculous, but it makes sense in context. And she like makes friends, it's queer. There are gender um, non-binary characters and I'm pretty sure the main character Eli has a crush on her best friend and like her other friend is gay and um, an Asian American. And it's like, there's great representation. I believe the author is non-binary. And this book has such a cool like, magical feel to it. It's very otherworldly. Nothing's really explained, which is something that I really like, but I can understand that other people wouldn't like. The fact that this book has a lower rating than Adam, which to be, to be clear, I liked Adam, but that book like got canceled. That book actively has campaigns against it. So why is The Girl of Hawthorne and Glass, which hasn't even come out yet, why is that the lowest rated book on my Goodreads? That book is good! Y'all are so fucking, <laughs> not you, the viewer, but there are so many book people who are like, yeah, I, I don't know. They'll, they'll sing the praises of books that are honestly pretty average, and then like this really inventive, own voices kind of like fantasy world comes out, and they're like, actually the world building doesn't make sense. Like, fuck you! Sorry, okay, I'm so fucking mad. Um, but we'll move on. So I do not agree with the 2.62 average rating. In fact, I think that's offensive to me personally. Um, I gave this book four stars. I think I actually gave it four and a half stars. Anyway, I love that book. I got it on Neck Alley and I, it's coming out next month or something like that. So that's some bullshit and y'all should read this book. Anyway, moving on to the second lowest rated book, on my Goodreads. It's Adam by Ariel Schrag. This book has a 2.69 average rating. I gave it four stars, but I have some qualifiers for that, so don't cancel me yet. This book is about a teenage boy. I think this book takes place in like 2004. 
Um, it's a teenage boy and he's just like not feeling great about his life. So his parents let him go spend the summer in New York with his sister, who's recently come out as a lesbian and is like very involved with the queer scene in New York at the time. Adam, who is hanging around all of his sister's like lesbian friends, develops a crush on a girl and lead, lets her believe that he is a trans man so that she feels comfortable dating him. That That's basically the premise. This book is clearly, is, it's not written by a trans man, it's written by a lesbian who was a writer for The L Word, if you know what that show is. And I think she said in like a lot of interviews that she wanted to kind of rile people up and make people think about like who was allowed in what spaces. Um, and I read this book for my LGBTQ novels of the 21st century class. So I read it in an environment where we were actively analyzing or looking deeper and asking questions and having really good discussions. I would not ever tell anybody to just like read this book on their own and take from it what you will. I think this is a really good conversation book where you read it with people who are ready and willing to have complicated or uncomfortable discussions about who is allowed in what spaces. Um, but I really enjoyed the discussions that my class had and that like obviously influenced my enjoyment of the book. So I gave this book four stars. I also just thought, I just enjoyed the reading of the book. Not to say that I think it's good. I had a lot of problems with um, Adam's, just like there are some racist things that this kid thinks in the narration that may be very uncomfortable. Also just the in like general idea of him pretending to be trans so that a lesbian will date him, which is already in and of itself something to freaking talk about. But this book like got canceled. Like <laughs> there are so many one star reviews because they were gonna make it into a movie. I think they did make it into a movie. And that movie also was like came under fire for not telling extras like what was going on with the plot and being transparent about like why there was so much controversy about it. Anyway, I think it's fucking bullshit that a, tr a genuinely good YA own voices fantasy book has a lower rating than this one. Even though I enjoyed both of these books. I like the other one better. Okay. <laughs> Now that that ranting is done, I can move on to the third lowest rated book. And this is The Transatlantic Conspiracy by J.D. Falkson. This book, I actually agree that it sucked. So this book is a 3.05 average rating, which is pretty bad. And I give it two stars. I was originally drawn in by the cover, which is like this really cool like octopus thing you'll see next to me on the screen. Um, but the pitch of this book is basically in an alternate kind of steampunk history. It's the alternate 1930s. Uh, they are about to launch the first train, the like first ride of this train that goes underneath the Atlantic Ocean. And um, the girl whose father is like the lead engineer is visiting her friends in England at the time. And they all decide to take the train from, or maybe Germany. I think it, it the train leaves from Germany, but they're in England. So they go to Germany and then she and her friend in England and her friend's older brother take the train across to America. And in the description, in, in the synopsis of the book, it says when her friend is found stabbed to death, uh, the main character, Rosalind, has to find herself trapped under the ocean on this train with a mystery to solve about what is going on. Um, that sounds so fucking cool, right? Am I, am I not right? This book was such a fucking letdown. First of all, the writing was not good. Second of all, why would you tell us that Rosalind's friend dies in the synopsis when that does not happen for 60% of the book? Her friend, who is, by the way, the most annoying character in the book, does not die <laughs> for so long. And then suddenly there's like a romance going on with her brother. I was really, really let down by this book. Um, I think it could have been such a good idea, but, oh, the year's 1908, not 1930s. Anyway, this book has such a good pitch, but I definitely think it deserves to have such a low rating because I did not enjoy it. The fourth lowest rated book is The Prophet of Yonwood by Jean Jeanne Duprat. 
this is the third book in the Book of Ember series, which is the first book is The City of Ember, uh, which is so good, by the way. If you haven't read The City of Ember, you should probably check it out. This book has a 3.27 average rating, and I gave it two stars. So this book is actually, what usually happens in series is that as the books go further on in the series, they have higher and higher ratings because the people who enjoyed the first book or the subsequent books are the people who keep reading, so they're more likely to have higher reviews. This book actually goes against that because it is the third book in a series, but I'm almost positive it has a far lower average rating than like every all the other ones. Um, and that's because this book is actually a prequel. I don't know why they just kind of put it in as like the third book in the series. This book takes place like, um, a hundred years maybe before the events of the first book and you don't know that until the end kind of so I guess this is kind of a spoiler but I think that it's more valid to be known ahead of time so I'm kind of not mad that I just said that sorry by the way if that pissed you off but I didn't really enjoy this book because the things that you like I wanted to get out of this book because I had been reading the first City of Ember, People of uh, Sparks books, is that like I wanted more of this like the world that had been established in the first two books and instead to suddenly be in like this suburb was like very off-putting to me. If you don't know what the City of Ember book is about, it's about this the city that is in the dark basically and the lights keep flickering and they don't know how to repair what is basically their decaying city. Um, and then two kids, I believe their names are Lena and Dune, discover an escape route, basically. And they're just trying to figure out what what is it about their city that makes them need somewhere to escape? And then also, how do they get out? And I fucking love that book. This book was kind of a letdown, but I still read the fourth one, which was also kind of a letdown, but like not that bad. The next one is actually a romance. It's The Lost Bride by Marianne Willman. I gave this book two stars and it has a 3.37 average rating. I think that's absolutely valid because the thing about this book, which is basically, I haven't read this book in a really long time, but I believe it's that when this man who like had a property passes away, um, though I, I think it's his like ward, I don't know if they're actually related, believes that she's going to inherit the house or she is hoping to inherit the house. But um, it turns out that the man had never gotten around to changing his will. So this long lost heir comes in to sweep the house out from under their feet, basically. It's an estate. It's a British estate. Um, this guy's an artist when he comes and he like falls in love kind of with the woman. There's also like fairies <laughs> and like, you know, when you like step into a fairy ring or fairy circle, you're trapped in the fairy world for like a hundred years kind of something like that's happening if you can tell that it's kind of confusing of a plot uh you're right and that's why this book was bad also the writing style was like kind of trash and it wasn't very sexy or romantic it just like wasn't that good so that one it deserves its low rating up next is you must not miss by katrina leno which has a 3.37 average rating and I actually gave it three stars, but I think I actually gave it three and a half stars. Um, I don't think it deserves to have this low of a rating, even though it seems very in line with how I felt. You Must Not Miss is about a girl named Magpie who is really going through it. Um, her mom is like an alcoholic and her dad isn't living with the family anymore and she's being ostracized at school and um, she discovers that she can kind of control uh, her own world, sort of, and how that kind of power begins interfering with her life. I actually really enjoyed this book. I think the reason I gave it such a low rating, which it's not a low rating, I gave it three and a half stars, um, is because, honestly, I don't know why. I'm reading the, the, like, the review that I gave, and I said that, even though I marathoned it, I didn't actually feel that much about it. And I feel like that was true at the time, but now upon reflection, I do, I did really enjoy it. And I do think about that book quite often. So I think I'm gonna bump my rating up to four stars. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. 
So I'm really liking Must Not Miss. I don't really know why it has such a low rating. I can speculate that it's because it's a very weird book. It's one of those like doesn't really explain itself type books which I really enjoy but um, I can definitely see why other people would be frustrated when reading it. They'd want more explanation. I don't think explanation is really necessary for books to get their point across especially when books are kind of playing with this um, magic influencing the real world. I feel like that's more effective when your imagination kind of gets to lead where the story goes. The next one is Twilight slash Life and Death by Stephanie Meyer. So this is the like giant double book that came out for Twilight's 10th anniversary that's half Twilight and half gender swap Twilight. It is a 3.42 average rating. I gave this book five stars. Um, I think we all know why this book has such a low rating and I think it's because people were like kind of sick and tired of Twilight at this point. I do have to say that Life and Death was really interesting. Actually, I do think Life and Death deserves this low of a rating, even though I enjoyed it. And it's, I know I enjoyed it because I'm obsessive. Life and Death, the gender slot version, the thing about it is that it could have been really subversive, but instead things were changed in a way to make it align more with gender stereotypes in romances despite the fact that it's very unusual for the male lead aka in this case Bo um to be kind of like bumbling in in the context of a romance it's more likely that the male lead is like somewhat confident and so more on, on the more confident side whereas the kind of clumsiness that Bo has in Life and Death is much more rem reminiscent of like a coming of age novel. So that was kind of an interesting dynamic, but I definitely understand that people who aren't like really big Twilight fans would be like, what the fuck is this? This is so stupid, which it absolutely is. It absolutely is stupid, but I really liked it. So I, you know, what can I say? The next lowest rated one is All This Could Be Yours by Jamie Attenberg. This has 3.41 average rating, which is kind of weird that it has a lower rating by 0.01 than Twilight, but whatever. Um, All This Could Be Yours by Jamie Attenberg is very not what I usually read. This is a literary fiction novel about a family dealing with the not dealing with the aftermath of their father's death, but basically the patriarch of this family falls very sick and is dying. And the book follows all of the members of his family, his wife and his children and their spouses um, in the day, the days following his death, kind of like what are the secrets in this family and how, how did this awful terrible man impact all of their lives for so long. I did not particularly like this book. I think for me it was just a little pointless. Um, it was good in the sense that it was like a character study because I can appreciate what it was trying to do but I don't feel anything towards it. It was kind of interesting to see this very complex Jewish family because it's not something that I read about that often where Judaism is explicitly a part of the family identity because that's something that you know I can relate to but yeah I didn't really know that book just didn't do much for me and it's it's out of my wheelhouse in a way that I wasn't like yes I want to read more books just like this where there are other literary fiction books that I've read such as My Dark Vanessa and um, Where the Crawdads Sing where I read them and I'm like, this is not what I usually read and I'm really liking them and I want to read more like that. So yeah, not sure about that one. Ninth, the ninth lowest rated book is Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad, which is a 3.43 average rating and I gave it two stars. I read this book in school. I have no memory of what it's really about um, other than the fact that I know that there's like a boat going down a river in Africa and it's racist. Um, I don't want to remember more of this book honestly uh, I don't ever want to read it again it's like the shortest fucking novel ever and it's so fucking dense and it's not fun to read so I just don't want to think about it anymore so fuck you heart of darkness you deserve that <laughs> rating and I'm ready to move on all right the 
very last book I'm going to talk about today is the 10th lowest rated book on my Goodreads shelf, and that is The Nanny Diaries by Emma McLaughlin by, yeah, by Emma McLaughlin. It has a 3.43 average rating, and I gave it two stars. And I'm going to be honest with you, I have no memory of why I rated it this low. I honestly don't <laughs> have any memory of that. So this isn't a very interesting one to end it on. Okay, the 14th lowest rated book is Bunny by Mo Mona Awad. It is a 3.5 average rating. I give this book five stars. This book absolutely makes sense. It has a 3.5. It, when I was reading it, I was like, ooh, yeah, this is gonna be divisive. One, because of the subject matter and how it kind of like talks about um, like sexual assault and the woman's power and what how women should feel about men um, and also like loneliness and elitism um, but also the writing style was like very weird so I 100% can see that it has a 3.5 I gave it five stars and I'm almost positive that that 3.5 is made up of a lot of one stars and five stars and not very many in the middle I think this book is really cool and I think you should probably check it out, but I definitely think if you can get like a little sampler of it first, if you don't like the writing style, you're not going to like the book. Um, so that's just like straight off the bat. I really like the writing style, it really worked for me. Okay, this is probably, I keep shaking the camera, but this is probably a really long video so I'm going to end it now. I hope you enjoyed. Um, it kind of got a little more chill after my starting rant, but let me know if you read any of these books and what you think about them, if you agree with me or if you don't agree with me, and I will see you guys next time. Bye!